I actually didn't intend to purposely get involved in animal cruelty investigations. It was really from being a rescuer in Los Angeles, and word started to get out among the rescue community that there was a lawyer doing rescuing, a prosecutor. And I started getting calls from all over the city and county of LA with people saying, I know of animal abuse and neglect, and I've called every agency in the government and nobody's responding. And this happened more and more, and I would try to use my clout as a prosecutor to get investigations going, and found that there was just no place to go. Uh, there were people calling me about dog fights that were about to happen that night, and in Los Angeles there was nobody to call. And I eventually took it upon myself to make Los Angeles a city that handles these cases aggressively. And I'm proud to say we're probably the number one city in the country right now as far as going after people that abuse and neglect animals. And it really started from being a rescuer. Yeah, uh, the, my animals had such an important part of my recovery. Uh, first of all, when I got sick with the cancer, it's one of the most lonely feelings in the world. But being able to come home to animals that, dogs and cats that need help, first of all, they unconditionally love you, but they taught me something else. It was impossible for me to worry about my cancer and my health and whether I'd live or die if I have a dog or a cat in front of me that needs fluids, that needs medication, that needs love. Uh, it's very hard to be into your own head when you're taking care of somebody else. So my animals really became an outlet for not worrying about my cancer and uh, really taught me more and more how to be compassionate and helpful to other people with cancer. I really attribute a, a large part of my recovery to being with my animals. And the irony of this is that when I was sick, one of the first things my family wanted me to do was get rid of my animals, because they thought, oh my God, you have stress of taking care of them, the infections, the disease, the bacteria. They never understood that this was my lifeline, was my animals, and it still is. When I found out I had cancer, I had to make a decision. Do I do a bone marrow transplant and give up my life with animals, or do I keep my animals and possibly risk dying? And there was a day when Trapper, my three-legged wonder, came on the bed and put his arm, his paw, and his stump around my shoulders, and I could hear him say to me, you need to be with us, we need to be with you. Uh, you can't give us up, no matter what happens. And it was literally that day that I made the decision to turn down a bone marrow transplant and go with an experimental medicine that ended up being the thing that saved my life and now saves thousands of people around the world. It's, it, I started talking to kids really when I was asked to speak about my cancer. And I was in a classroom once talking about cancer and what it was like to have cancer. And I had photos of my animals. And it just happened to be something I wanted to show the kids. And I saw this amazing connection where kids really could understand life through the animals. And it dawned on me that if I could bring animals to schools, the animals can teach a lesson much better than Bob can teach the lesson standing in front of kids. And as I went through my cancer experience, I realized that I had a lot in common with my animals and that we were different and that we were being discriminated against either because I lost my hair or one of them was a pit bull or lost his leg. And so it came together, this connection between my cancer and what my animals were going through, and I found out the animals were the best teachers. Uh, in another, put it another way, you can't take a child who stutters or has a, a, a difference and put them in front of a classroom and say, look, this child stutters or this child has a different color skin, you should treat him or her fairly. It doesn't work that way, it wouldn't be fair to the child in the front of the room. But you can take a three-legged dog or a, a, a wonderful pit bull or a little blind dog and make the comparison between that animal and people in the world who also have differences and the kids get it. And that's how I started this program.